Before delving into today's case, we wanted to give a massive shout out to today's sponsor, NordPass. NordPass is a password manager created by the cybersecurity experts who created the renowned NordVPN, the online security and privacy app which is trusted by over 14 million people worldwide. NordPass manages all of your data safely and securely, storing all of your passwords, such as for social media, emails and Netflix, in their secure encrypted vault. NordPass also securely stores your personal information, such as your name, delivery address or phone number for simpler shopping online. Moreover, it has an autofill feature so you won't need to type in your credentials again and again. When running a business such as this channel, we have a number of different accounts to manage, so it's a relief to finally not worry about forgetting or losing passwords. NordPass has it all safely stored in their secure vault, which only we can access with a master password. NordPass also has a password health feature which allows you to check up on all your old passwords reminding you to change them every so often for your own safety. During their own global research initiative NordPass discovered that the most popular password was the numbers 1 to 6 and many people in the UK used Premier League football teams for passwords. Having a truly unique password instead will make it far more difficult for your information to be at risk of being breached. The NordPass app and desktop version are extremely easy to navigate around and one smart feature which really caught our attention was that NordPass recognises suspicious websites. NordPass helps keep you from revealing sensitive information to unsecure websites as well and to have that extra layer of protection makes all the difference to us at Dark Curiosities. With various members of our team having had their data breached in the past, they feel much more safe and secure when researching cases online using NordPass. For viewers of this channel, NordPass is offering an exclusive 50% off a two-year NordPass premium plan at nordpass.com forward slash dark curiosities or using the code dark curiosities. Plus, you get an additional month for free. Click the link in the description below and the pinned comment to get this incredible offer. Thank you once again to NordPass for sponsoring today's video. Lily Christensen was born on the 5th of June 1955 to Mads Peter Christensen and Anna Kirstine Ellie Hemmingsen in Brundum, Esbjerg commune, Sudenmark, Denmark. Both Ellie and Mads worked on the family farm. At 16 years old, Lily was an A-grade student at Brundum School in Tarp and had a talent for maths and physics. She was described as a popular, friendly and lively young woman, yet she would sometimes be quiet and shy. She was well liked among her peers and made friends easily. Growing up, Lily was described as an angelic child, but as with many others, when she reached her teens, she began to rebel, much to the dismay of her parents. She began to sneak out with friends late at night, despite her mother and stepfather inflicting a strict curfew. Though Lily never took drugs herself, many in her circle of friends did take illegal substances, a fact which greatly concerned her parents. As a result, Lily got into several arguments with her parents, one of which took place on the night of the 5th of October 1971, which resulted in Lily being grounded. Sometime during the night, an angered Lily snuck out of the family home, jumped on her moped and never returned. Later that night, following a family visit, Lily's parents returned home to find her gone. They immediately went out to look for her throughout the nearby vicinity, but only found her moped in a sewer excavation site the following day on the outskirts of Esbjerg, not far from the family residence. Other than this, there was no trace of the 16-year-old schoolgirl. A missing persons report was subsequently filed. 
Five days after Lily disappeared on the 10th of October at around midday, two 12-year-old Boy Scouts who were orienteering in the Marbeck Dune plantation area near Esbjerg discovered the decomposing body of a young female under a pine tree, her skull having been smashed in by what was later determined to be a heavy fence post, with signs of strangulation around her neck and a pool of blood beneath her body. The cord from the victim's anorak had been used to asphyxiate her. It appeared that the body had been dragged and dumped on the plantation, with Lily having been killed elsewhere, though the killer had done nothing to conceal the body. Following the grisly find, the boy's scoutmaster swiftly contacted the Marbeck guard, who arrived on the scene shortly afterwards. It didn't take long for the police to identify the deceased as 16-year-old Lily Christensen. The coroner concluded during the autopsy that Lily most likely died on the day she vanished, sometime between 8.15pm and midnight. Despite being fully clothed, it was also determined by pathologists that Lily had had sex prior to her death, as semen was found on her underwear, though police determined that due to her remains being fully clothed and the fact she had no defensive wounds, motive for the crime was most likely not sexual assault. Due to lack of forensic technology, in the 1970s, Danish police stored the underwear in a secure evidence lockup in the Esbjerg Police Department's basement until DNA technologies were more advanced. Meanwhile, the Danish police immediately called in 21 detectives from Esbjerg, Verde, Herning and Vela, as well as a travel team to help aid in the investigation. Over 1,200 people were questioned, but no significant leads were established, nor any motive could be determined. The case then simply went cold. When Lily's case was reopened in 2001, 30 years after her death, investigators managed to use new DNA technologies to analyse the semen residue that was left on her underwear, resulting in a full DNA profile, potentially belonging to her killer. During the appeal, a number of new witnesses came forward to police and told them about certain individuals who began acting strangely following Lily's untimely death, most of whom were in her circle of friends with connections to the drugs world. The four witnesses didn't come forward previously as they didn't want to accuse anyone without evidence, but the DNA profile made sure that that would not happen. Interestingly, some of these men in Lily's company were arrested in regards to other criminal cases. Lily had also met two men in Buparken shortly prior to her murder who were actually wanted in relation to other criminal offences, but the DNA found upon Lily belonging to her killer was not matched to any of these individuals. Traces of the DNA sample were later sent to the Department of Forensic Genetics in Copenhagen. The murder of Lily Christensen is the reason why the National Police in Denmark created a DNA register, which in turn could help solve numerous cases in the future. Unfortunately, as of 2022, the DNA profile has not flagged up any matches, meaning the identity of Lily's killer remains unknown. Danish authorities were interested in locating a red Volkswagen seen in Esbjerg on the night Lily vanished. However, despite speaking to three individuals with similar vehicles, the one seen has never been located. Lily's family, especially her parents, experienced mixed feelings about the case being reopened. As many parents feel following such tragedies, Mads and Ellie didn't want the traumatic emotions of their loss to be brought to the surface once again after so many years. Despite being asked by several news outlets to speak about what happened to Lily, the Christensons refused, too heartbroken to speak of their loss. They didn't see the point of talking about it publicly as it would never bring Lily back. 
Unfortunately, Lily's mother, Ellie, passed away in 2016, aged 93, and her father, Mads, passed away in 2017, aged 97, both going to the grave without ever knowing what happened to their beloved daughter. Deputy Criminal Inspector Kai Nielsen of the Esbjerg Police told the media that although the case is old, the investigation is still ongoing. In Denmark, homicide cases are never closed until the perpetrator is found, tried and brought to justice. It's been over 50 years since 16-year-old Lily Christensen met her untimely death, her life tragically stolen from her in the most horrific way imaginable. What happened following Lily's departure from home and the events leading up to her murder remains a mystery.